Stanford and Cal to the ACC. Does it make sense for the two schools? Does it make sense for the Atlantic Coast Conference? Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. All right, before Stanford and Cal do anything, they should exhaust every possible avenue and path in negotiation with the Big Ten. Stanford's fit, especially Stanford, to the Big Ten makes sense for both entities for tons of reasons. Also Cal to a lesser extent. All right, so if that's been exhausted and there's no chance that Stanford and Cal can find refuge in the Big Ten, then turn our attention to the ACC. Why does it make sense? Why does it make absolutely no sense? <laughs> On the absolutely no sense side is geography, of course. And not necessarily just for the football. For the football, it's not convenient and it's not what we are used to. It's a regional sport. It grew up as a regional sport in college football. And it makes sense from a regional standpoint in regards to rivalries and just flavor across the country. There's a difference in Midwest football, Southern football, uh, the food, the music, the culture, the values, everything else attached to different regions of the country. That's what made it fun off the field leading into the spectacle on the field. And even the pageantry on the field is different in different areas of the country. All right, that's been torn to shreds. Stanford and the ACC and Cal can do nothing about that now. They have to uh, preserve themselves. It's all about self-survival. All right, so this is why it doesn't make sense. Geography, okay, traditions and all of that included, but that's been blown up elsewhere. It also doesn't make sense in terms of geography because of the travel. And travel has been mitigated to a certain extent in our modern age. However, it still uh, takes a toll on student athletes. Not talking about football so much because that's about five or six trips a year out to the other coast, but in terms of the non-revenue sports. And the non-revenue sports, do they count? Well, financially, they don't count. If anything, they count against you. However, they are integral to any school or institution. They draw prestige and brand. They build it up, especially when you're Stanford. So Stanford to the ACC is a big coup for the ACC and all the non-revenue sports. Let's consider this. Stanford has won 26 of the last 29 Director's Cups. That is a measurement of total athletic success. Stanford is undeniably the top athletic school in the country when you take all the non-revenue sports into consideration. Phenomenal sports at Stanford, most national championships of any school, and the ACC could make that addition to its conference. So Stanford's a plus, 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 plus from an athletic standpoint. Now football, the football's down now. The attendance at the game is plummeted, but the TV ratings aren't bad. They would fit very well in the ACC. People still, to a large extent, watch Stanford football if it's available on a major network. We did a TV ratings series earlier this off season. Please check it out. We broke down it, uh, the, the 2022 television ratings by conference by team, by network, Stanford still draws some eyeballs even at its weekend at three and nine state. And it's been a bad football program for about five years. And in this era of transfer portal and NIL, if you think about uh, what makes them viable for most schools, it doesn't fit the model at Stanford because they've got a high, high standard of uh, enrollment, of course, at Stanford. And that makes it difficult to bring in players from the outside. But we know that Stanford can succeed at football and at the very highest level. Look at the Stanford football program under Jim Harbaugh and early in David Shaw's tenure. Elite. Elite at times. They've had high peaks throughout their history uh, post-1970. Uh, but the lows have been low. So Stanford very inconsistent. Cal, at best going back years and years and years and years back to Aaron Rodgers in the early 2000s, at best, has been a six or seven win football program, barely getting to bowl play, and sometimes they're awful. So Cal brings nothing in football. Stanford brings the potential of what it's been in the past. Uh, overall athletic success against Stanford, one of the best brands in the country, and Cal, not as successful. When it comes to academics, Think about how important academics are to most ACC schools. 
And of course, they're important to a large degree to every school. Let's not lose sight of that. Even the lowest ranked schools in Power 5 play are extremely strong institutions. We do our deep dive with Tony Altimore on a regular basis, and he shows us the rankings of the schools. So we know that the academic's important everywhere, but especially at places like Duke, Virginia, North Carolina, Boston College. Stanford would be the kind of addition that ACC presidents would just love. And also the commissioner has stated in recent days and based on the comments that he has made that the academics and those relationships important you may think well the academics separate from the athletics well it does go hand in hand to a certain extent we have found out in recent days that obviously if the athletic slash football uh, component has been devalued meaning in the Pac-12 to a certain degree, well, it can't be ignored and the league's going to fall apart regardless of the athletic prowess or the academic prowess of those schools. But it's still extremely important and the money, the prestige, everything, the research and everything else that Stanford would bring to the ACC is phenomenal. The endowment is phenomenal. Not that the other, the other ACC schools would be able to benefit from that, but there is synergy. There is connectivity in schools belonging to the same conference in regards to a number of contracts, relationships, uh, socializing, all of it included. We're not going to take a deep dive on academics. Just believe me, Stanford addition to any conference is a plus. All right. We've pretty much gone through everything. The negatives is the geography and the travel and just there being no connection between the two. The positives are stacked up on the other side, as I just mentioned. Stanford more than Cal but uh, they can come as a pair circa USC, UCLA, and uh, Arizona, Arizona State, and others that have left as pairs going to another conference. All right, before we dive into how Stanford and Cal have performed against the ACC and how they might project forward, more importantly, let's check in with Matt Zemick of Trojans Wire, who recently on one of our get-togethers uh, laid out this scenario this is all speculation, but it makes sense as a possibility because we know Notre Dame, despite not being a full-fledged member or being a member at all in terms of a football capacity in the ACC, still has a vote. And though the vote was shot down and uh, the ACC needed one more vote to include and uh, bring in Stanford and Cal, understand that most of the schools in the ACC want this to happen. It's Florida State Clemson. It is also North Carolina and North Carolina State holding back the ACC at this point. But there's going to be some <laughs> conversations being had to try to swing a vote to get it back on the ACC side and bring in Stanford and Cal. Here's a possible scenario that was laid out by Matt Zemeck just a few days ago. The ACC needs four no votes to block uh, that Notre Dame proposal, that uh, Stanford-Cal plan. And that fourth school is the one that's really interesting. North Carolina State also voting no to at least temporarily for now block a Stanford and Cal move to the ACC. And so like on, on several levels, it's fascinating. I'm not and I'm not judging NC State. It's just it is fascinating that like Nor North Carolina State seems to be voting along with North Carolina. All right. But. You know, wh why would NC State want to go along with North Carolina? Those schools are rivals. Those schools are competitors. Like if North Carolina wants to do something, does North Carolina State really want to do uh, the same thing? That That's one angle. But the other thing is that when you compare North Carolina and Florida State and Clemson to North Carolina State, like those are uneven situations in terms of leverage and being able to potentially bounce to the Big Ten or the SEC. Like, does North Carolina State think that voting with uh, North Carolina, Florida State, and Clemson affords it a certain degree of leverage in any potential future uh, realignment shift? Because, you know, as I've said, and I've gone on the record saying this here on this program with you, Mark, at the Voice of College Football, I think that in like five years or so, you know, give or take a, give or take a year, but like at the end of the decade, you know, I think Florida State's going to leave the ACC. I think Clemson's going to leave the ACC. Like, you know, they, they, they obviously aren't satisfied, but I think they're going to wait for those grant of rights penalties to, you know, go low enough that they think they can, you know, litigate, negotiate, 
get out of it, you know, cheaply enough and then make the move that they've always wanted to make that they certainly want to make right now, but they, they can't yet afford it. The time's not yet right. So, you know, with those schools, uh, you know, pretty openly, I mean, especially Florida State, Florida State definitely wants out of the ACC. Like they've had it. <laughs> they've had enough. Um, you know, with, with that in mind, you know, North Carolina State's motivation and North Carolina State's leverage, you know, doesn't seem to be in the same place. So it's very, it's just very conspicuous that North Carolina State would vote with those other three schools, uh, schools that have more options seemingly and are, are bigger, you know, television and media properties in terms of their value. It's just very fascinating. And, and like if you split this a few more ways, too, in terms of that ACC voting calculus, why is uh, Wake Forest not voting along with? Uh, North Carolina and NC State. Why are the Demon Deacon, Deacons set apart? Why is Duke set apart? You know, why is Duke not voting with North Carolina? It's prestigious uh, Tobacco Road neighbor just a few miles away. And why is Miami not voting along with Florida State against the proposal? Uh, now, you know, so one part of the speculation, the conversation about this is that, you know, the 11 yes votes that they're uh, some of those votes are just for show. Like they might not be hard yeses. That they they know that there are four votes enough to block the move. So they're voting yes only to curry favor or at least not look like the bad guys in all of this relative to Stanford and Cal. You know they want to be on Stanford's good side to a, to an extent, or at least maybe they're trying to leverage the situation in their own way. So maybe those eleven yeses aren't hard. Uh, committed votes, but nevertheless, like Miami, Wake Forest, and Duke, they all chose to vote on Notre Dame's side, and so you know that's part of the intrigue that we don't know how solid those yes votes are. But if we do assume that those yes votes are solid, you know, in many ways, North Carolina State would seem to be. If you're Stanford, so let's bring it back to Stanford. If you're Stanford, you need to lean on NC State. Like if you're Stanford and you want the ACC, you need to be leaning on NC State, you know, the weakest of those four uh, institutions uh, blocking your move to the ACC along with Cal. And I go back to the endowment that Stanford has. Now, of course, a lot of an endowment at any elite uh, school, you know, a lot of that is earmarked for various purposes. Uh, like you can't just, you know, spend, uh, you know, a large portion of the endowment freely. But like, let's just play with numbers. Uh, $180 million, all right? That would be one half of 1% of the Stanford Endowment if we put that figure at $36.3 uh, billion. That $180 million is rough, would be roughly a half of 1%. If you're Stanford, do you consider writing like a, a really large check to North Carolina State for a home-and-home -home football series? Maybe you do a not not just a home and home, but like you do a four year series and you just say, hey, Wolfpack, here's a nice, very, very fat eight figure check uh, for, for a football series. And basically Stanford could buy off NC State, change that no vote to a yes. Boom. Now, of course, <laughs> now, of course, the, you know, this gets back to are those 11 yes votes hard and firm? And if and if not, like the but like Stanford should be s testing the waters. Stanford should be making, uh, you know, inquiries to those other ACC institutions. Like, are you really solid? Like, do you believe in this? And and if not, like remember, Stanford doesn't have a 2024 football schedule because the Pac-12 is dead, or at least the Pac-12 is in limbo. Like, there is not a Pac-12 schedule laid out for next year. If you're Stanford. I mean, and, and you want the ACC. Now, I don't know if Stanford wants the ACC. Like, I, I know that Tony Altimore, last summer, he was saying that Stanford and Cal would be a natural cultural fit for the Big Ten. And I'm inclined to agree with him that, that you know, the, in terms of the academic prestige, the heft, that and, and also having uh, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington as travel partners, you know, you can play games with each other in that West Coast cluster of schools – the Big Ten would seem to make more natural sense for Stanford as a landing spot compared to the ACC. But just, just as a hypothetical and just gaming this out, 
if you were to just say that Stanford wanted to be in the ACC, Stanford should be thinking about cutting some large checks with ACC schools. Like, let's remember, you know, Notre Dame plays five ACC schools is to fill out its independent schedule. So Stanford could consider going independent uh, for 2024 in football, like making that decision right now. Stanford can just stay. We're going to go independent in, in football in 2024, cut some checks to those ACC schools that might be on the fence to fill out your schedule, and voila, you get the vote, and then you can join the ACC for the 2025 2026 uh cycle you know so like that is that is a plan that's like a bridge plan uh that stanford could set in motion with the money that stanford has you would think that stanford if it really wants to make sure it has a power five home you know this is that we're getting into george kliavkov territory here if the other pieces are moving around stanford in ways that aren't favorable to stanford stanford's then playing that same kliavkov wait and see strategy instead of proactively moving, locking something down, securing it uh, with the resources that Stanford has. One wonders why the Cardinal, why the, the institution hasn't uh, moved more decisively. Now, there have been no reports that Stanford is like leaning hard on NC State or trying to influence the ACC vote, but it, one would think that administrators, leaders, would be having some back channel conversations with ACC schools saying, "Hey, want to play want to play a home and home with us? Want to play a four a four game series uh, from 24 through 2027 with us? Uh we can make it worth your while." You know, wink wink, nudge nudge. Uh you know, like Stanford has the ability, I would think, to be able to make some deals uh, if it wants, if it really wants that ACC seat at the table. So it's going to be fascinating to see what Stanford uh, tries to do in terms of its influence, in terms of its resources, in terms of its reputation. Um, you know, I, I just wonder why Stanford hasn't acted yet. And I wonder why uh, the television networks also haven't responded to Stanford because, and this is one more point to make. Last summer, you know, I thought, well, Oregon and Washington, we're going to immediately follow USC and UCLA to the Big Ten. But network executives said, whoa, Stanford's value per year is actually 15 million more than Oregon is, 45 million to 30 million uh, because of the Bay Area television market compared to the Portland and Eugene uh, television markets. And so the fact that the Big Ten or any other conference hasn't picked up Stanford like that's genuinely surprising relative to the industry knowledge and what a lot of the experts said last summer when we were all talking realignment 24-7 following the USC exodus uh, from the Pac-12 moving to the Big Ten. So it's just really fascinating uh, that Stanford has been quiet as a church mouse through all of this. We're, I'm wondering when Stanford is eventually going to make some kind of a, of a power play uh, behind the scenes. So, Matt, taking the basic premise that a yes vote by a particular ACC school means that we want solidarity, we want to solidify our conference and stabilize it, we don't want or we're looking to add value to the conference and go forward as a ACC, and that obviously the dissenters were the ones that want to keep the, the conference down, want to keep others from entering the conference because then it dilutes their power within the conference. It also uh, changes a number of dynamics within the conference. And in the meantime, obviously distributes the money to another, even if it's compromised in terms of the revenue share. So it was obvious to see Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina on one side of it. So the curious votes to me were North Carolina State, as you mentioned, and then on the other side, Miami. Yes. Those were the two votes that hit me as odd. Very. Now it's on to the football and how Stanford and Cal have fared against the ACC in recent years and how that projects forward. Now, there's not a whole lot to go on, but let's check out uh, some postseason appearances and some home-and-home -home series between Stanford 
and the ACC. Well, the last time the Cardinal took on the ACC, a couple bowl games at the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, and victories against a Pitt team that went to the ACC championship game. Despite its final 7-7 and record, Stanford defeated Pitt. And the year before, Solomon Thomas with a goal line stand against uh, Mitch Trubisky as Stanford uh, avoided the two-point conversion and took home the win on the final play of the game against North Carolina, 25-23. Go back to 2012 and a home-and-home series with Duke, and Stanford was so much better than Duke at that point, winning 50-13 and 44-14. Game against Wake Forest and a huge win by 44 points in 2010. Again, these are really good Stanford teams taking on the worst of the ACC. In 2010, of course, there was a BCS Bowl game appearance as Stanford defeated Virginia Tech 40-12. to That was Jim Harbaugh's team that uh, took on the Hokies of Frank Beamer. We've got a loss to Wake Forest in 2009 as they lost that one 24-17. And then you got to go all the way back to 2002 and a home-and-home home series with Boston College. A couple of Boston College teams that were pretty good at 8-4 uh, and 9-4, and, and, and they split those two games. Then go back to 2001 and a Georgia Tech win over Stanford in the Seattle Bowl. Add it all up in 20-plus seasons in Stanford, 7-3 and three against the ACC. They've outscored ACC opponents by over 13 points per game. They are 2-1 and one against ranked teams, 5-2 and two against non-ranked teams. Those Stanford teams better than the ACC team, so the 7-3 and three record makes sense as the Cardinal is 94-33 and 33 in those seasons that they played ACC teams. The ACC, on the other hand, 68-60. and 60. Of course, there is a Notre Dame connection to the ACC, even though they are not a member, and there's a long-standing series between Stanford and the Irish. Well, during this series of seasons, Stanford 9-13 and 13 against Notre Dame. For Cal, it's only four games going all the way back to the start of the century. Uh, for Cal, they defeated North Carolina back-to-back in 2017-18. Uh, really bad uh, Larry Fedora North Carolina teams that went 2-9 and nine and 3-9. and nine. In 2008, there was a bowl game appearance that Cal took on Miami. And one of Miami's many losses and losing all these bowl games over the last 15 years and Cal won that one 24-17 and then you go back to 2003 and there's a win for Aaron Rodgers and Cal over Virginia Tech 52-49 remember that one at the Insight Bowl add it all up and look at that Cal's 4-0 against the ACC but you got to go back 20 years They've outscored those ACC teams by 22 points. Those Cal teams, 29 and 23, significantly better, although those Cal teams not great. Still, the ACC teams were pretty bad, except for Virginia Tech and Miami coming in at 20 and 29. Cal also took Notre Dame to the brink last season, of course, throwing that would-be Hail Mary into the end zone, losing to the Irish by a touchdown in Cal's only appearance against Notre Dame in the last 20 years. Add it all together, and Stanford and Cal are a better fit in the Big Ten for a number of reasons, mostly academic, but also they've got ties to the Big Ten, as do all the schools in the pack because of the Rose Bowl and other home-and-home series. So Stanford in the Big Ten would be phenomenal for everyone, Uh, Cal to a lesser extent, but if they believe that they're shunned by the Big Ten permanently, then the option to the ACC, I say thumbs up for the ACC, They're going to solidify their conference in a number of ways. Thumbs up to Stanford and Cal because they find safe refuge in a Power 5 conference. Even if Florida State, Clemson, and others leave eventually, then the ACC is solidified with much in the same way as the Big 12 has become. Grab up territory in schools. If you can't get the elite, you grab up the second, third, and fourth tiers of college football, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, etc., Well, the ACC doing the same, even though it doesn't make sense geographically. (laughs) That's all out the door these days. Stanford and Cal to the ACC makes sense for both parties, in my opinion. Your thoughts down below? Leave them in the comments section. We'll read them. We'll respond right here at the Voice of College Football.